So running for U.S. Senate, uh, this came as a complete surprise to me. Uh, Aubrey Dunn came to me about two months ago and said that uh, he was looking to drop out and he would like me to take his place. And he would like me to take his place because they thought I had the opportunity to win. Now, if you've ever heard me say anything about the U.S. Senate, what I've said about being a U.S. Senator is, no, I don't want that job. It's a job that's all about bellying up to the trough and the last thing we need is to spend more money in Washington. I happen to think that the biggest issue facing this country right now is our deficit, is our debt. We're going to have a trillion dollars in deficit this year. If I go to Washington, if I'm elected U.S. Senator from New Mexico, I am not going to be a wallflower. I'm going to go to Washington, guns blazing, and I'm going to be the fiscal conservative of the Senate. I would hope to be on the budget committee. I'll do the bad work. I will submit a balanced budget to Congress, something that is absolutely needed. And a balanced budget to Congress, that means dealing with some huge issues that it seems like everybody's got their head in the sand over. And those huge issues, Social Security has to be reformed. Medicaid, Medicare have to be reformed. The defense budget has to be cut. And in the context of cutting the defense budget, look, I'm running for U.S. Senator from New Mexico. When I was governor, uh, if you will recall, the BRAC Commission was looking to cut military presence in New Mexico as it was looking at cutting military presence all across the country. I headed up the BRAC Commission. I should have headed up the BRAC Commission. I was governor of New Mexico. But out of that process came more military assets in New Mexico because there was the realization that things don't rust in New Mexico. So uh, advocating for a balanced budget, advocating for 23% reduction in all federal spending, when that happens, when you talk about reducing spending, you look to spend your dollars in the most efficient manner. All military assets in this country belong in New Mexico because things don't rust. We've got the space to conduct on-the-ground maneuvers, and right now there's an issue with airspace, extending airspace over southern New Mexico to accommodate what will be the largest F-16 base in the world. That is something that we need to promote. As a U.S. Senator, that is something that I would accommodate. And there are issues along with that, but we are talking about thousands of jobs, 1,000 new pilots that would be trained uh, in Alamogordo. Um, that's not call center jobs. Those are real and those need to be promoted. Along with that, promoting the labs. The infrastructure is here for the labs. So when you talk about cutting a budget, you look to spend money most efficiently. Well, the infrastructure is here in New Mexico. We're spending new money on infrastructure in other places, building infrastructure that could be done in New Mexico. Um, I am running as a libertarian uh, slash independent. Let's not forget that 45% of voters now that are registering to vote are registering as independent. Where is that representation? Well, arguably, if I'm elected to the U.S. Senate, arguably, I would be the swing vote in the Senate. That would be huge for New Mexico. That's how close the Senate is projected to be. And if I'm the swing vote, I think that bodes really well for New Mexico. Uh, being able to, on the budget committee, or talking about dollars and cents, um, actually making that stick. I was governor of New Mexico for eight years. Um, I understand this process. I think I was very effective as governor of New Mexico. One of the things I did as governor of New Mexico, I had an open door after four policy uh, where I would see anyone in the state uh, starting on five minute increments the third Thursday of every month. I learned a lot. I would continue that as senator from New Mexico in New Mexico but I would also set up an open door after four policy for waste, fraud, and abuse for anybody in the country that wants to come and visit me in Washington, D.C. to talk about those issues, and I would be that spokesman. So my pitch to you is these are issues that need to be faced. Talking earlier about the kids, how unfair is it that we're running a trillion dollar deficit that our grandkids' grandkids aren't gonna be able to pay back. 
And this is the biggest issue facing this country, and everybody's got the head, their heads in the sand over this. And if spending money were the key to success, if borrowing money were the key to success, Zimbabwe would be the center of the world, followed by Venezuela. And that is not the case. There is a consequence to continuing to spend more money than what we take in, and is, it is completely irresponsible on our part to put that burden on our kids. What's going to happen at some point is there will be horrible inflation to accompany what we're doing. And we are not immune from what has happened over and over worldwide. We are not immune to this equation either. Something that I talk about all the time, I support free markets. Uh, I don't support subsidy. Uh, I don't support tariffs. The example I like to use is the free market bankrupted coal. Free market bankrupted coal. And why did it bankrupt coal? Well, because of fracking, because of natural gas. Uh, a lot is being talked about renewables. Renewables are really important and it's exciting. But when you look at the projection of renewables, 40, 50 percent, uh, 2040, 2050, where's the other 50 percent coming from? Well, that's, that's natural gas. And a big issue facing the oil and gas industry, I think, going forward, will be the export uh, of those products uh, in the Senate. I will stand up for making that as easy as possible. Having been governor, understanding that rules and regulations, if all rules and regulations do is add time and money to your life, why have any of those? Uh, from a legislative standpoint, I may have vetoed more legislation than the other 49 governors in the country combined. That was all about time and money versus health and safety. Health and safety, that's very real. Time and money, that's very real too. And let's not have the government rob us of those things. Thank you very much.